Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and today I'd like to finish up my look at Corey Kell's 45 degree sector test. Now, behind me you'll see the range tables for a 16 inch naval rifle from an Iowa class battleship. This is the actual wartime firing manual from World War II. Now, if you look at the last page of the manual on page 48, you'll see this table right here. These are the corrections that need to be made due to the rotation of the earth. This is standard fare in artillery. If Mr. Kell is an artilleryman, as he claims, he is well aware of the effect of Coriolis and earth curve on the flight of artillery projectiles. So either one, he is misrepresenting his background in the military, or two, he is deliberately lying to this audience, possibly to sell them books and t-shirts. So let's cue up the music and take a close look at his 45 degree sector test and see where he went off the rails. Now I'm going to start by letting him describe his setup of his observation station, or OS. One of the things that you'll always notice about fake experts is they like to make up acronyms. It gives them a technical sound without actually saying anything. But we'll go ahead and have a listen to him. Let's talk about the orienting station setup, the OS, what I call the OS. And basically it's comprised of a tripod, platform, base, stabilizer board, and digital protractor. First step, and you can, all this information, again, you can view on the website. The first step is, I use a stabilizer board because you can shift your whole device using the stabilizer board a lot easier. And you'll see here, you see the blue bottle cap, that's the sun survey point. And what you want to do is if it's uh, your first reading, after you put the survey point, it's going to be a westerly reading. It's going to be at anywhere between 15 and 1600 or 3 or 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So all you can do is you can use a compass or you can just aim this right at the sun. Aim it right at the sun as it's going away from you. Again, that's your sun survey point. Put that stabilizer board. Then you're going to put your your tripod, you're going to connect it to your platform and your digital protractor. I keep mine connected, so it's a relatively fast setup. You can do this, once you practice it, you can get it down to two, three minutes. Starting out, it's probably going to take you about 10 or 15 minutes just to mess around with it. But you can get it down to two, three minutes. You can do this really quick, very rapid. What you're going to do is then you're going to level your, uh, level your platform using your tri-level. Once you level your platform and you also have a level on the, uh, on the digital protractor, you then you're going to measure your station height. And again, you can kind of keep this close to your survey point. Always keep close to your survey point, the radial arm right here, because that's where you're going to take your measurement from. Whether it's, this is, it happens to be a half meter or you can do one meter measurement uh, test. You use a uh, tape measure to do that. Get your correct station height. And then you're going to check your plumb. And this is your plumb line. And this goes right over the, what, the sun survey marker. You just put that right over your sun survey. You want to be within a, about one inch. This practice is directly from military science astrological survey operations. Now, once again, he's misusing the term military science. Military science is the art of war. It is the history and strategy of coercive force, armed conflict. It has absolutely nothing to do with physics, gunnery, astronomy, or any of the sciences. You know what does have to do with field artillery? Army Field Manual 7-2. Chapter 7 is basic astronomy for field artillery. I'd like to draw your attention to the first sentence of the first section of chapter 7. The Earth has the shape of a flattened sphere. Specifically, that flattened sphere, which as you can tell by the big black arrow, rotates. Mr. Kell would be intimately familiar with this field manual. He is quoting it in this presentation. I wonder if he actually read it. Because if he did, he's lying to this audience. 
and I find that rather disingenuous, don't you? Directly. It is solid, it is fundamental in principles and application. Once you do that, you've got your station, you want to uh, check your or record your GPS location, your elevation, because elevation has a lot to do with it, so you need to know your elevation. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So you record all your data, you, you can either do your GPS or your lat longitude, and then uh, record that. You can record it on your whiteboard if you want, or a, mark, a marker and pen. I like using the whiteboard. This is what it looks like. So this is the actual observation. So the one on the left, this is a side view, and you can kind of look along the side of the digital protractor if you want. This is that top rail arm, okay? This is a side view. This is a two minute warning on the easterly read. In other words, that sun with this type of digital protractor, if the sun is coming at you, we'll, you'll have a two minute warning before you get center mass. And that's what you want, center mass of the sun. You know, about right now is when the adults need to step in, do not do this. Do not sight down a protractor and look into the sun. If you want to go blind, that's how you go blind, staring at the sun. Always use a shadow. Let me give you a couple of other ways that you can actually get these readings without staring at the sun. You may recall that what I did was I stuck a fishing pole in the ground next to my driveway and I marked with coins the tip of the shadow as time went on. Now, as you can see, this forms a straight line. And the reason this happens is that the Earth is rotating on its axis. And as a result, the stationary sun casts a linear shadow as opposed to a curved shadow. Now, you'll notice that I've got, these are pennies, and I've got a dime right here. This dime marks when solar noon occurred. Now, all you have to do is draw a line along these coins and you will have a true east-west line. If you draw a line perpendicular to any point, you will have a true north-south line. If you mark the solar noon and then mark three hours before and three hours after, you can easily measure the angles that Mr. Kell wants you to measure. Once you get center mass, you make sure you're level, click and get your reading. Hey, I've got 51 degrees. What's my surface? Flat. I got a 51 degree reading. I'm over 45 degrees. I'm coming off a flat surface. I can't get 51 on the sphere. Geometrically impossible. Why? Line of parallel. Line of parallel, baby. You walked into the doorpost. You're driving a car, looking the wrong direction with your seat reclined way back. Now, actually, that's not true, and we're going to see why here in a couple of minutes. He's making incorrect assumptions and coming to flawed conclusions because his modus tollens does not start with a true statement. But we'll see that again in a minute. It is accountability and validation within these processes and applications. It is a reality. Now let's have a quick look at what he is basing this 45 degree sector test on. Have a listen. What are the factors that we need to understand in testing? Okay, these are critical. Timing, when to actually do the test. The OS or the orienting station elevation. How that affects testing, the OS location, inside or outside the prime meridian zone, and then OS distance. And that has a lot to do with uh, the uh, location of the OS. This example of this test box, and this isn't to scale, this is just to show you. This is what a test box looks like, center mass inside the prime meridian zone. In other words, the Tropic of Cancer, Equator, and the Tropic of Capricorn. So if you're doing it, you're going to have what? You're going to have higher sun angle because you're what? You're closer to the sun. You're in the prime meridian zone. Your test box. Now your test box can be here, it can be outside, it can be anywhere in the world. Anywhere, this test can be done anywhere in the world. Now we're going to go ahead and stop here for just a moment because I would need to correct a few things and I need to show some basic errors that he's making. First of all, meridians are lines of longitude. They are not lines of latitude. 
The area between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn is called the tropics. The prime meridian is the line of longitude that goes through Greenwich, England. The other thing that I want to point out and you may not have picked up on is look down in the lower left corner. These lines that he has drawn on this blue circle are centered on magnetic rather than geographic north. Magnetic north is not used to determine the location of the tropics, the location of the meridians, or the locations of lines of latitude. That is geographic north and south. Magnetic north is over a thousand miles from the North Pole in northern Canada. He doesn't know basic geography and doesn't make a differentiation. That is a middle school level geography concept and he glosses right through it and his audience applauds as he does it. Obviously, none of these people took geography in middle school. Timing, the test box, when to start, when to stop. Three hours, that tests the 45 degree sector. That's what you're testing, that portion of the sphere, that portion of the flat earth model. We're testing the sector, three, four, five. Let's look at elevation. What elevation? This is another thing that escapes heliocentrist. And this is another this is another red flag on how you can tell that that grid system that the heliocentrist built was wrong because it didn't come off a of sea level. In other words, when I talk about sea level, that is nearest the perfect geometric shape form. That is near sea level. You're closest to the actual geometric shape of that surface of that model, whether it's flat or you believe it's a sphere. Sea level is it. What's going to happen at sea level? Because you're at lower angle or lower altitude, you're going to get what? Higher sun angle. You get up about 1,500 feet, you're going to have what? Lower sun angle, higher elevation. So it's a reverse effect. The higher you go in elevation, the lower sun angle you're going to have. And at high higher elevation or high altitude, above 5,000 feet, you're going to have the lowest sun angle. So guess what happens if you test your model at high altitude? and it fails, do you think it's gonna pass going down to sea level? If you're failing at high altitude, it ain't gonna get any better for you. Okay, so now we see the flaw with this test. Here is his fundamental misunderstanding of how astronomy and geography and navigation works. I wanna draw your attention to a couple of things. First of all, this is what he thinks is happening when you wait three hours. You get a sun reading at noon, you wait three hours, and he says that this angle should be 45 degrees. That's not really what happens. Now, the other thing that he's making a point of is the altitude. He says that there will be a different angle to the same sun from three different altitudes measured simultaneously. That's what this diagram is showing. That is not true. Why is it not true? Because in both these cases, the only way it could be true is if we had a local sun. We don't have a local sun. Light from the sun arrives in Earth in parallel. That is beyond question right now. That is an established fact, and it has been verified by multiple experiments. Because it has been previously verified, we are taking it as a given in this situation. I'm not gonna sit down and try and play games and justify why that light is parallel. I've already demonstrated that. Second of all, the sun is not local. I've demonstrated that as well. Let's look at that again in the next section and I'll show you why that's the case. The sun is the real answer. And this is what happens when distance, same thing. As we move farther out from the guide angle or the object, the elevated object, as we move away from it, 
What happens to our angles? They decrease. They go down. This is the effect of distance outside the prime meridian as the greatest effect. And here is the other problem that he's running into. Notice that he's got a flat surface. He has a fixed altitude of the sun, and he's got three angles going directly to the sun with that flat surface. This means that we can triangulate the height of the sun. Let me get out of here and show you why this is a problem. In this situation where we have this flat surface, and we have our three observers, one here at the geographical position of the sun, we have one out here, and then we have another one over here behind his shoulder. The angle to the sun is 90 degrees. This is a height above the ground. If we go out a fixed distance and get an angle of 55 degrees, if we know this distance, we can determine this height trigonometrically. Then we can come out to this 35 degree mark and do the exact same thing. We know the distance between here and the geographic position. We know the angle. We can determine this height. On a flat surface, there will be one height, and only one height. Now, when Blue Marble Science, when B-Ball for Life, and when I did the Eratosthenes experiment during the March equinox, two different years, we all calculated a theoretical height of the sun based on the idea that the Earth was flat. We all came up with different numbers. Now, I did it twice for Michigan, within one degree of each other. My numbers to the height of the sun came back consistently. Blue Marble Science's numbers and B-Ball for Life's numbers came back at a different value based on the fact that one was at 35 degrees north and one was at about 21 degrees north. The surface of the Earth cannot be flat because if it was, those numbers would triangulate to the same height. They do not. Now the reason that the 45 degree sector test does not work is that it is based on the assumption that the Earth is flat and the Sun is local. Paying lip service to the idea that it's a rotating sphere, so we're going to quote unquote test it, does not change the fact that you are making these calculations based on a flat surface. You did not look at a globe. You did not make the measurements from a globe. You did not check into basic celestial navigation. You did not check into how sextants worked. And you certainly didn't check army field manuals in your profession that tell you otherwise. So your 45 degree sector test, Mr. Kell, is gibberish. It is scientifically unsound and easily refuted, as I have done. So, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you like the new audio-visual quality from the new computer. More of that to come. So, hit that like and subscribe on your way out. If you want to see me continue to make improvements in the channel, consider becoming a Patreon or a channel member. Really love to have you. Take care, guys. Bye.